Um, you saw the um, active rescues that were happening over in Plant City. Now we have moved on to a different part of Hillsborough County by the University of South Florida. And oh my God, just look at this. An incredible amount of, of flooding um, just from all the rainfall and a nearby lake over here. Um, I have never seen this by the University Plaza area. Uh, and I used to live here for many years. Um, as we were zooming in, you can see cars that are flooded out. Um, you can see the police officers who have taped off um, a huge, huge section of this road. And I can also tell you that in that direction, John, there's an assisted living facility where Hillsborough County um, Sheriff's Office tells me that they are conducting active rescue operations right now. They have over 100 people in there that are trapped and they need to get them out. And you're talking about some people who need to use wheelchairs, some people who, um, because they're so sick or elderly, you know, they're, they're red bedridden. Uh, so uh, complex medical issues where they need the help of, of HCSO deputies to get them out of there. And how are they doing that in floodwaters like this? Through amphibious vehicles. So um, SHERP is what they call them, this vehicle that's able to get into these floodwaters uh, with deflatable tires and literally float in this and then come back onto dry land and the tires reinflate to get them out of there. So you are looking at just a stunning, impressive site here at the University Plaza area of Hillsborough County. Um, and, and you can tell from the people over here on the left, uh, if we can pan over this way. It's people who have never seen this coming out here, getting close to the water as HCSO is conducting active operations right now. John. Isabel, we're going to stay with you for a little bit because these are remarkable images um, that we are seeing now in Hillsborough. And this water that is there, is this the rain or these rivers that have overflowed? How did it all get there? Where can it go? John, a little bit of everything. The impressive amount of rainfall that was unrelentless um, overnight from, from Milton. There's also a lake in that direction and retention ponds that filled up from all of that rainfall and then drew it out here. And then there's also high tide. We heard Tampa Mayor Jane Castor warning that we're not out of the woods yet when it comes to flooding. The tide um, swelling the rivers and causing flash flooding, causing flooding issues period um, where it can be a dangerous situation and we're witnessing this right now. Um, I know that they have been throughout the morning checking in deputies checking in on cars too that have been flooded out to make sure there's nobody in need of their help. But we know again in that assisted living facility over 100 people that do need their help right now. All right. At the other end of this water an assisted living facility people need to be taken out of. Isabel, if you could have the camera push in again so we can take a look at, at some of these vehicles that are yeah. stuck there. Now, what we don't know is if they were there all along and the water just rose on parked cars or as often happens during storms and after storms, people go out and try to drive through things. But one thing I think that is clear, Isabel, right now, and that looks like what maybe happened here because these cars aren't positioned in a way <laughs> that, uh, that it looks like the drivers had a choice there. Um, just again, describe how widespread this is and what you've seen among uh, in regards to flooded vehicles. Right, John, and it's a little windy right now. Hope you can hear me okay. Um, what caught Sheriff Chad Cronus served by surprise um, as I was talking to him this, mo this morning was how many areas of Hillsborough County, his county, that would normally never dream of seeing this flood um, people woke up and were suddenly blindsided by this flooding. That's what he told me. I don't believe that this is an area that would normally experience something of this nature. When I was over in Plant City, um, folks who were stuck at a Holiday Inn over there, they told me they, they woke up and suddenly they were sloshing their feet on the, uh, on the ground floor there uh, of the hotel. Um, so they weren't expecting that. These were people who did you know, everything right. They were not in evacuation zone A or B. They were further inland, never anticipating the flooding to reach them. And suddenly they have found themselves um, in this situation. Now with, with these cars, I, I, I'm with you, John. I don't know, you know what led to this situation. If you know, suddenly they saw the waters rise and they didn't listen to that old you know, saying of uh, turn around, don't drown. 
Um, what happened here with these cars? I don't know. I'm supposed to meet with Sheriff Chad Cronister here shortly. Um, he, we're anticipating doing a ride along here as they're conducting these active rescue operations and hopefully getting more details oh, wow. as to um, how we got to this point here in the university area. Yeah, I didn't even see that sedan parked underneath that Bank of America sign there. There's barely the roof of a car sticking out there. You can get a sense of just how deep the water is. Uh, Isabel Rosales, you and your team have been running all around uh, the state in the Tampa Bay area. Thank you so much for your hard work. We'll let you get back to reporting there to link with the Hillsborough County Sheriff um, and, and tell us what you can about these rescues that are happening sort of on the other end of this water you're seeing right there. So Isabel, to you and your team. We appreciate it. At least nine people have been killed in the state of Florida and search and rescue efforts are underway right now after Hurricane Milton made landfall as a powerful Category 3 storm last night on Florida's west coast. Floodwaters inundated multiple areas across the state of Florida, leading to water rescues that began late last night. Milton dropped more than 18 inches of rain on the city of St. Petersburg, which Look was more so than a one in 1,000 year that, rainfall that, that event. That's where Milton also research. ripped the roof off of Tropicana Field, home of the Tampa Bay Rays Major League Baseball team. The stadium had been set up previously to be a makeshift shelter for first responders, but no first responders were staging there when the roof was damaged. And in Minnesota Key, close to where Milton made landfall, Milton leveled entire homes along the beach in Hillsborough County, which includes Tampa. An incredible moment there today as the sheriff found a 14-year-old boy in need of rescue. He was clinging onto a fence that was floating. The sheriff's office says the teen was at a friend's house last night, did not think it would get that bad, but when he tried to get back home, he needed help. And that's when he flagged down the sheriff and he was thankfully pulled out of the water. While the record rainfall and fierce winds certainly caused many problems, especially on Florida's west coast, at least five of the deaths reported so far came from a tornado outbreak on the opposite side of the peninsula. Milton created deadly supercharged tornadoes. The National Weather Service issuing more than 125, 125 tornado warnings, the most ever issued in the state in one day. At least nine tornadoes struck St. Lucie County, killing five people there and flattening hundreds of homes. We're gonna to talk to the St. Lucie Sheriff in just a moment. So, of course, the big question, what comes next in terms of recovery as many areas were dealt a one-two punch from Hurricane Helene two weeks ago and now Hurricane Milton. Right now, about 3.4 million people are without power. Many are without water. St. Petersburg shut down water services citywide. And one in four Florida gas stations still has no gas, according to Gas Buddy, which could complicate travels for evacuees who are trying to return home. President Joe Biden today said there are still dangerous conditions in the state of Florida and he urged people to wait to go out until given the all clear by local officials. According to Governor Ron DeSantis, Milton's worst storm surge up to 10 feet came in Sarasota County where Milton made landfall and that's also where we find CNN's Randy Kay and where she wrote, wrote out the storm. Today she reports on what the storm left in its wake. Kind of hits home. It, it's really hard to see. It's kind of spooky you to see all the damage. Hours after Hurricane Milton moved off the coast of Florida, Floridians are surveying the extensive damage across the state. There were a number of confirmed dead in St. Lucie County, over 100 miles from where the storm made landfall following tornadoes. The uh, tornadoes we saw develop yesterday in Milton were really kind of supercharged compared to the, the typical tornadoes you see in a hurricane environment. Yeah. New drone footage shows Milton's destruction on the west coast of Florida, where the hurricane made landfall as a Category 3 storm. The storm's monstrous winds ripping the roof of Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg to shreds and downing several cranes in downtown St. Petersburg. Things can be replaceable, but life cannot. In Fort Myers, Robert Haight says he got his pregnant wife and kids to a safe spot just moments before a tornado bore down on them. I saw the tornado coming. I yelled for my wife to come look at it. It's cool. Kid wife come look at it. Started to get close, hit the trees, and we all started going for the hallway. Didn't even make it there in time. Started doo -doo, and I heard a piece of glass crack and it sucked the whole roof off, and I felt the thing suck me up. And I grabbed my kid and my wife and hunkered down. Another Fort Myers homeowner says the storm ripped his home apart in a matter of minutes. All this, this happened like instantaneously. Like these windows blew out. I was about probably right here when it happened. 
One Tampa business owner braved floodwaters to assess the damage to his commercial property Thursday. I don't know what to say. It's a lot. Born and raised here, never seen anything like this. With Helene, we, for the first time, we had storm surge and took on water in the 20 bottom units. Now with Milton here, uh, we've lost the brand new carports. Our dock is destroyed. While many evacuees are hoping to soon return home, hard hit Sarasota's chief of emergency management is urging people to hold on a little longer. Still dangerous out there, so we're asking for residents just to stay put. Uh, you know, we know a lot of people evacuated, which we appreciate, but we just need some time to clear everything so that it's safe for them to return. And Jake, the power of this storm is is just incredible. We were on South Shore Drive where we are right now much of the morning yesterday. This dock was intact. This boat lift was up there. Now it's in the water. And take a look at this. This piece of the dock right here, guess where it came from? All the way over here just flew in that storm. There's pieces of the dock. The, the, the pilings are out there in the water as well. So uh, it just goes to show you uh, what can happen here. We also spoke to this homeowner and he told us that uh, his security alarms were going off because the storm blew his front doors wide open, Jake. All right, Randy Kay in Sarasota. Thanks so much. CNN's Brian Todd is in Fort Pierce, Florida in St. Lucie County on Florida's east coast which sustained so much damage from a deadly tornado outbreak before Hurricane Milton even officially arrived. Brian, it seems as though many people have simply lost everything. That's absolutely right, Jake. And everywhere you go in this county, St. Lucie County, you get glimpses of the sheer power and force of these tornadoes that plowed through here yesterday. And this is one example. Take a look at this. I don't think I've ever seen an 18-wheeler uh, just basically picked up and tossed over like this. Look at the power that it took to just kind of just knock this thing over. There's another 18-wheeler across the street here. This this truck was basically picked up and kind of impaled on a tree back there. And, you know, just, again, just the power that it took to lift this thing up and throw it on its side and impale it on trees. Again, there's another one across the street, uh, just down the street from here on the Lakewood Park Methodist Church. A roof got ripped off. We spoke to the uh, pastor there, Leo Valbrack. He said he, uh, you know, he knows some people in the community where the, the fatalities occurred. That's called the uh, the Spanish Lakes Country Club Village community. According to the sheriff of St. Lucie County, Keith Pearson, that's a modular home community for people who are 55 years and older. We have tried to get access to that community. The police and the sheriff's office are not letting us into that community. They're still scoping the damage, possibly looking for more victims and assessing just kind of exactly what what happened in that village. But that that area is the one that's really devastated. That is just uh, a couple of miles south of here, Jake. Uh, you know, again, we, quotes from local officials, the uh, the commissioner of St. Lucie County, uh, George Landry, said this has been a tragic 24 hours. Uh, the, the mayor of Saint, Port St. Lucie, Shannon Martin, says, quote, we've never seen anything like this. And again, what's interesting about these tornadoes that came through here, Jake, uh, they, they seem to have been kind of sporadic in nature. In some communities, they tear whole swaths through communities, and you can see the path. This one, it seemed that these tornadoes kind of touched down, affected certain pockets of communities, then lifted up. So you can see uh, devastated buildings and things like this next to buildings that are completely intact. Jake? All right, Brian Todd in Fort Pierce, Florida. Thank you so much. The storm surge left boats stranded on lawns and even tennis courts in Punta Gorda, Florida, about 50 miles south of where Hurricane Milton first made landfall. In other areas of the state, people lost their entire homes. That, of course, is where FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, comes in. I want to bring in Keith Turry. He's FEMA's acting director of response and recovery. Keith, how vast is the devastation in Florida and where do you think it is the worst? Yeah, obviously, uh, the storm impacted the entire state, as your reporters were just saying. And, and we were talking about that before the storm. Obviously, we had the storm surge uh, risk, the rainfall, which was, was extreme in some areas, and that tornado risk, which turned out to be uh, a, a more significant risk, uh, a risk of tornadoes than we typically see in a hurricane like this. So I think uh, it's hard to say exactly where the most, dif the most damaged areas are. Obviously, some of those areas south of Tampa where they had that storm surge is significantly impacted. But there's inland flooding in the Tampa area. You just talked about the tornadoes uh, on, the, on the east coast. Uh, and, of course, we're still going to see riverine flooding in other parts of the state. So still a very dynamic situation and, and widespread impacts from Milton. Let's talk about that because uh, the ongoing flooding that you're referring to in, in several parts of Florida, it's going on right now. How is FEMA aiding search and rescue operations? 
So we're well synced with our with our state partners. We've got teams in the state operations center and we're embedded in all of the counties that are most significantly impacted. Uh, we brought in federal search and rescue teams. We brought them to be integrated with the state effort. So they are out uh, working with the state partners uh, to help uh, undertake any rescue efforts that may be required. And we're also just trying to push that safety message that there are still a lot of hazards out there, whether they be down power lines, floodwaters, uh, areas that may still flood as the rivers come up. So really just trying to push everyone to stay safe. Listen to those local officials about where you, when you can return and, and just please stay off the roads uh, and stay put until it's safe to do so. For folks in Florida who, who need help from FEMA, uh, what should they be doing right now? And what is your message uh, to the people who have heard falsely that they're only entitled to a few hundred dollars of aid? Yeah, the first thing you do, obviously, make sure your, your home is safe. It's safe to be there. But if you do get to get home, and what you first want to do is take pictures. You want to document uh, what the damages were uh, when it comes to the point to do assessments and look and, and register for assistance. That's going to be important. Um, you know, it's been said, obviously, that FEMA only provides $750. That's not true. Uh, that is the first uh, type of assistance that people impacted by a storm like this can get access to. It's for those upfront things they might need, like food, water. Uh, diapers, et cetera. Uh, but after that, there are opportunities to get additional assistance, temporary housing assistance, uh, access to a hotel room, a range of other things. So uh, if there's more to, to be provided than just that. That's just the initial funding. And we want people to trust that FEMA is here to help them uh, and they should register for assistance if they need it so that we can begin that process. And FEMA was already dealing with the aftermath from Hurricane Helene two weeks ago. How does this uh, this result from Hurricane Milton, how does that compare? Well, I mean, first and foremost, just the, the fact that these two storms have impacted the same area, you know, our hearts go out to those people that are impacted. It's very difficult to go through something like this and to, to have those impacts uh, multiple times, let alone once. And so our hearts are going to be with them. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, there's some complications with having multiple disasters. Uh, we do have resources there, though, that are already deployed. Um, we're already working with the state. We've already surged uh, our, our, our staff there uh, to, with many others to be able to help. So it's going to be a long road, um, but we're going to work with the communities and all of our partners to help people uh, first stay safe and then recover as best as they can. Correspondent Isabel Rosales is on the ground in Tampa, Florida, and she's joining us from there right now. Um, we can see you. Well, we can see some video. Um, Isabel, tell us what is going on, where you are. Right. I am in Hillsborough County in this area that's known as upstate and I am in a, a shirt. This is an amphibious vehicle that is able to get into flood waters like this. And let me show you something. You see that the Great American Assisted Living Facility. Um, this is the site of a major rescue operation this morning where Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office deputies and um, uh, fire rescue rescued 135 people that were stuck in there because you can see that this has been a this is a one story structure. This is an area that was not under evacuation orders. This is an area that normally does not see flooding like this. But what happened was all of that torrential rainfall just wouldn't stop and kept pouring and adding on to it. And then it led to flash flooding, leading to a situation where those people that a lot of them using wheelchairs, bedridden, on medication, on oxygen, had water coming up to their knees, a very scary and dangerous situation. And they waited there for hours until conditions were safe for deputies to get out here and rescue them, get them out of here in a vehicle exactly like this. Um, but this is what's left of the community, just incredible floodwaters. We've seen those um, who didn't need immediate rescuing get out by literally wading through this water, putting their children on their shoulders, and that's how they've been able to get out of here. Taking a pair of shoes, a couple of items of clothing, this is incredibly devastating and not something that they anticipated. I don't know if you can see through this corner here, but we're about to approach an apartment complex, and you'll see them just hanging up here on the second floor. We've waved to them, they're okay. They don't need help right now. Um, so they've got to decide how do they get out of here, right? Either they hunker down in there or they have to tread through these waters um, to exit out of here. So um, just an incredible, stunning sight from this area that nobody yeah. anticipated. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm looking there. I mean, to an extent, they say, because we had uh, the Tampa city councillor on last night, and it, it was going to be the worst hit, right? Tampa was kind of, kind of the eye of it. It appears that it was St. Petersburg. But do you think the people who you're seeing there, why didn't they evacuate? Uh, was there a reason? Have you been able to talk to people who are still there? Because they clearly got the warnings very early. Right, so we are actually not in an evacuation zone at all. This, this, these people were listening to directions. Um, they were not told to evacuate out of here. This is an area inland, not by the water at oh, all. Wow. They weren't supposed to evacuate, and that is what has been a stunner. In fact, to that assisted living uh, facility that I mentioned, People evacuated from Bradenton. That is just above Sarasota, the area that got, really got hit hard. They evacuated here. Those patients evacuated here thinking that they would be okay. I spoke with the sheriff here, um, the Sheriff Chad Chronister of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. This is where he started his career as a rookie. This area right here, university area now called Upstate, 33 years ago, and he was in tears because he's never seen anything like this, is what he told me. He says that this is a, a heavily Latino population working paycheck to paycheck. Um, and again, they were following orders. This is not anything that they, they, they would have anticipated. This caught them by total surprise. And now they're stuck out here. I mean, can you see this? Waiting in the water right here. I mean, this is their normal right now until these waters recede. Yeah. And this well, is going to take a long time to recover from. We've got a few seconds. You're painting an incredible picture. Your camera people are really showing us exactly what's happening. And it's an incredible thing to, be, to, to hear that they were in the evacuation zone and had followed instructions. Just briefly, do you know whether they're able to have food or, or clean water? So I've been told that some of these units actually have power. I can't imagine if they have running water or okay. not, but I will tell you this, the folks that were rescued out of the assisted living facility, they were helped out. They were given blankets, right. they were given food, juices, and then rescued over to, to a center where okay. they will get more extensive help. Uh, Ro uh, Isabel Rosales, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Back on the Gulf Coast, that's the west coast of Florida, areas south of where Hurricane Milton made landfall. Many homes simply look like this. Milton ripped the roof off of this home last night. The home is in Northport, Florida, near Sarasota, which was under evacuation orders. Cheryl Bernadowitz lived there. She joins us now. Cheryl, how are you doing? What was your first thought when you found out how badly damaged your home was? Hi, Jake. How are you? Um, what you heard was about the flood, the flood, the flood. So we really prepared for the flood. And then when we, we left home and when we got back this morning at 430, it was absolutely devastating. Only because we just went through Ian and the same exact thing happened with the tornadoes. So to see the, and it actually ripped the concrete right out of the ground, like the posts for the carports, they totally got ripped with the concrete out of the ground. And the whole entire roof just got completely tore off. It doesn't sound like there's anything you could have done to prepare for such a thing, am I wrong? Right, I didn't know tornadoes were coming with this one as well. Yeah. But apparently they did. But even if you'd known, and, I mean, and, like I said, we, a tornado is a tornado, right? I mean, there's nothing you could, even if you'd had the right, knowledge. Not much you can do. Right. How much help have you gotten from local and federal officials so far, state officials as well? Are they, are they there? Are they on um, the ground? Are they helping? They're not. No, nobody's here. And when you go on the, on the line, there's no, um, they're not putting this uh, hurricane up yet. So my brother had to start me a GoFundMe page because we just got finished paying for $50,000 for the damages we got from Ian, which was only two years ago. We just finished that two months ago and we got hit all over again. We see you, you're in a car right now. What, where are you now? Where are you staying? Where are you going to stay? I'm up by my clubhouse because by my house there's no service and it's not coming in clear. Your brother says you couldn't afford... The clubhouse afford... of my community. Okay. Your brother says you couldn't afford insurance. Um, do, yourself, do you see yourself... Right. Can, can, the insurance is way too high. Yeah, no, that's a real problem in Florida. So many insurers have just left the state. Um, do, you, do you see yourself continuing to live there? 
I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I don't want to. I just, it, when you go through it so many times, it's my fourth hurricane, and four times I've gotten demolished. So after that, you just, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. It really does. I'm told that you, you have seven rescue animals. Are they okay? They're all okay, thank God. They're all perfectly fine. I know it's a lot, and it's a lot to take them when you have something like this going on. It's hard to keep them all safe and take them along with you. But yes, thank God, they're all okay. What kind of res rescue animals are they? I have uh, four dogs and three cats. And you just brought them in the car with you? I did. I brought them. I'm the... I brought them all with me. I left them in cages, and I went to a friend's house, and I put them all in the garage. Okay. Well, I'm glad they're okay. Uh, is is everybody from yes, your neighborhood okay? I mean, I'm so sorry about your home, but physically, Every, are people are people okay? Physically, there hasn't been any reports. I was listening before. You said a few people had died in other communities. Thank the good Lord, nobody has died here. But we have lost. A, we have, we have a lot of damage. For sure. It's horrible, Cheryl, and I'm so sorry. Cheryl Bernanowitz, thank you so much, and best of luck to you. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate it. Millions of households and businesses are without power, and state officials are warning that the danger from the flooding is not over yet. This is Slicker's Eatery in Cortez, Florida. It suffered significant damage from Hurricane Helene. We spoke earlier this week with the owner of that place, uh, Bob Slicker, who had to put a rebuilding on hold uh, to prepare for Hurricane Milton. And Bob joins us now. He's on the phone Bob, uh, did your did your restaurant make it? It sure did, Jim. And um, oh, good. thank you very much for for having us back. I did get to tour the village this morning. We had no water damage. I had a lot of ex exterior damage that I didn't in the first storm. Both my air units and and all the things that were outside um, were damaged by the wind and blown apart. But I got no water inside my building, which is the lowest spot in Cortez. So at least we have that going for us. That's good. And and what's the what's the damage like across the rest of Cortez or what you've seen of it? How bad does it look? I can see some of the pictures you're sending us and it looks like the wind damage, as you were saying, that was that was a big uh, factor there. No, I, I just even getting there in my neighborhood alone. Um, there's trees and I have roof damage, but the closer you get to the shore, the worse it is. Trees down in the road, um, roofs off apartment buildings, all the trailer parks, they, they suffered severe damage um, mm -hmm. through through all of that. But there was not any, um, I've actually, we were in the northwest side. The Iowa was about three miles from us as far as I've never been in anything so loud and horrendous in my life for hours upon hours, first coming wow. from one direction and then the other. And, and the eye wall was, we were hoping we would get a break with the eye wall. And you've lived in that area for more than 35 years. I, I gather, um, have you ever seen a double whammy like this? Helene and then Milton doing all of this uh, destruction. Never, ever. And just, and just, the total difference of the two. I mean, one, one four feet of water, and and the rest we had sustained winds of 100 miles an hour plus. I'm I'm sure, in the second one. So, every every large tree that I saw driving the the four miles towards the island was was down, damaged, broken. Um, all fences. I think I don't think there's a fence standing in anybody's yard right now. Wow! Wow! All right, Bob. Well, glad your business is okay. Glad you're safe. Uh, please give everybody our best uh, there in your uh, part of Florida uh, and, and glad that you all survived. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it.